And now, a minute from our conservation partner, the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Hi, I'm Aaron Adams. I'm the Director of Science and Conservation for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Today we're going to talk about bonefish connectivity, or are our fish their fish? There are two ways that different populations of fish can be connected, by migration of adults or by the oceanic transport of larvae. Tarpon are a good example of how adult migrations connect populations. The fish that you catch in the Keys might be the same fish someone else catches in South Carolina. But for bonefish, it's a different story. For bonefish, we know that they have small home ranges, but tagging in the Bahamas has shown us that they'll migrate long distances to go to spawning locations, which are located offshore. When they spawn, the larvae that hatch in the open water float around for between 40 and 70 days. During that time, those larvae could circle back and end up right where the parents started from, or they could be transported long distances by the ocean currents. That means that the bonefish in the Keys might not have been born in the Keys. They might have been spawned in southwest Cuba, Mexico, or Belize, and then ended up in the Keys as babies. So even if you fish for bonefish in the Florida Keys, you have to realize that a decent number of the fish you're catching could have parents from Mexico, Belize, or Cuba. That means that you have to not only be concerned about habitat conservation in the Keys and water quality improvements, you also have to be concerned about those same issues in those other locations, as well as how those fisheries are regulated so that there's not high harvest of fish that are trying to spawn. We really have to think about our fish are really their fish, and we have to manage them as a collective group. To learn more and to make your voice heard, visit BTT.org.